What's up everybody, Greg here with Lens Pro to Go and Lens Rentals, and in today's video, we're gonna be taking a look at some camera tests of the Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera 4K. The first thing that we're gonna look at is the high ISO performance, so going from 100 ISO all the way up to 25,600, and then we're gonna take a look at the exposure recovery over and under exposing at five stops, and then we're also gonna do that in both native ISOs, so 400 and 3200. So let's jump right into the first test, looking at the ISO performance. Starting off with the lowest ISO at ISO 100, we're getting a super clean image with this, very nice colors and no noise. Going up to 200 ISO, we're gonna to continue to have a very clean image. Going up again to 400 ISO, which is the native ISO for the Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera 4K, and we're having again a very clean image at this lower ISO. Going up to 800 ISO, we're starting to increase a little bit of the noise that's coming in, but there's no color noise, just a little bit of dancing around, and you can only really see that in the 300% zoom in. Going up to 1600 ISO, again, a little more noise coming in, but no color noise, so just a little bit of digital grain look, and it looks really good still. Doubling that and going up to 3200 ISO, we're starting to see a little bit more of that noise and a little bit of softening of the image and a slight bit of color coming in, but this is still definitely usable. Up to 6400, we're starting to see a lot of magenta and greens in the higher ISOs and a lot of noise, but you could definitely clean this up with some noise reduction. Up to 12,800, this is where we're starting to see a little bit too much noise that's going to be a little bit tricky to bring back with any sort of noise reduction and a lot of those magenta and greens. And then all the way up to 25,600, we're seeing a ton of green and magenta and all this color noise in there and just an overall softening up of the image. So that was the high ISO performance test. Now let's take a look at the exposure recovery first at the native ISO of 400. So this is our correct exposure at that native ISO of 400. And what we're gonna do here is go underexposed and overexposed to see how it handles. Starting off with our underexposure, we're gonna go down one stop. So on the left, you see the actual shot, which is the underexposed, and on the right is the recovered shot and what we've been able to bring back. And then in the center there, you have our correct exposure. So going to two stops underexposed, we're already starting to see a little bit of that color noise, a lot of the magentas in the shadow areas as we try to bring those shadows back. Going to three stops underexposed, it's even more in those shadow areas and basically overall the whole image. But in those shadow areas, you can really see that like bright pink magenta that you're gonna see even more as we try to recover it from four and five stops. Going to four stops underexposed, you can see a ton of that magenta and green digital noise in there. And you're also seeing some horizontal banding along the image. And finally, going to five stops underexposed, you're seeing a ton of noise. This is totally unusable. And you're seeing a ton of horizontal banding in there as well. Now we're gonna go back to our correct exposure and then we're gonna go in the opposite direction. So overexposing the image and then trying to bring all of those highlights back. So starting with one stop overexposed, again, same thing on the left is the actual shot, on the right is the recover shot, and in the middle is our correct exposure. As you can see in our actual shot, we're already starting to blow out some of those highlights, but we're able to recover all of it in our recovered shot. Going to two stops, even more blown out, and this is actually pretty extreme, but we're able to keep all of that detail in our recovered image. Even up to three stops overexposed, which is really blown out on that actual shot, all of that information is still there on our recovered shot and it looks really, really good. Once you step up to four stops overexposed, this is where the image starts to fall apart, which if you look on the actual shot, it's completely blown out most of it, except for some of those colors. And we're starting to have a little bit of a hard time pulling those highlights back in my face and some of the brighter areas, like in the paint thing right over my left shoulder. And then we'll go to five stops overexposed and this is gonna be pretty much unusable. Everything is blown out here and we're not able to get any of that information back in my face or in any of the brighter areas in the image. So that was the exposure recovery at 400 ISO. Now let's look at the other dual native ISO of 3200. So going back to our correct exposure, we're at the native ISO of 3200 now and we're gonna do the same thing over and under exposing it. So first we're gonna start with underexposing it by one stop. Again, the left side is the actual shot, on the right is the recovered shot, and what we've been able to bring back. Already at this one stop, we're seeing a lot of noise in there. It's not a ton of color noise, but it's definitely noticeable. Going to two stops, this has already become pretty unusable, and I would never try and bring this back. Even with some noise reduction, it's just going to soften up the whole image. Going to three stops underexposed and trying to bring that back, you're basically looking at like a four stops under trying to bring that back at the 400 ISO. And again, this is unusable and you're starting to see a little bit of horizontal banding. 
at four stops it only gets worse and we are pretty dark here so hopefully you're not underexposing your image this much and then we go up to five stops underexposed and it's just totally gone i mean we're almost black on the actual shot and as we try to bring it back we're seeing a lot of those magenta and green noise patterns back to just our correct exposure and now we're going to go in the opposite direction overexposing the image at one stop overexposed we're getting a pretty clean read pretty much all across it there is a little bit of blown out highlights in the actual shot but we're able to recover all of that in our recovered shot up to two stops overexposed again even more blown out but this handles highlights really well and it's able to bring all of that back and keep all of that information in our recovered shot up to three stops overexposed we're starting to blow out quite a bit on the actual shot but again all of that information even in like the white whites is able to be brought back in our recovered shot up to four stops this is about as good as it was getting with the native 400 iso we're really just losing information in like the bright bright whites like the mug on the shelf and the white over my shoulder but we're able to get all the information back in my skin tones which is the most important part and then lastly up to five stops overexposed completely blown out on the actual shot we're losing a lot of information in my face as well as any of the brighter areas. And as you can see, it's hard to recover any of that information. So that's gonna wrap it up for the camera test of the Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera 4K. If you wanna see some more videos about this, some sample footage and then some things to know, those are gonna be linked to at the end of this video. And if you wanna try this camera out for yourself, there's gonna be links in the description. Let me know what you guys think about this camera in the comments and I'll see you in the next one.